Hey guys, welcome to the new moon in Gemini reading. Now, they shared a message with me when I was sitting down to get everything re ready. I don't even have everything ready yet. So I want to show it to you, show it to you right now. This is the information I have received right before the reading when I sat down to prepare it. Venus, we know we're working with the lovely Venus. Love. This is about unconditional love and creating the shape of unconditional love in our lives. We're going to use Virgo. I analyze. We need that energy. We need to break things down. We need to analyze them. We need to see what's working and what's not working. Because this is about repairing, mending, healing, restoring. That's the part of the path we're on. And that right now is connected to the 11th house. Our friendships, our partnerships, our connections. And our connections are being made with help from the divine. Okay, and there's our connections. This is masculine, feminine, the divine. But it's through the child. And that is being shown right here. Spirit is helping to bless us. We're making our connections of the threes. We know we're working with the threes. The three of swords... The Three of Pentacles, our Three of Pentacle Pals are helping us to make sense of this, as well as we're making our connections to manifest with the Three of Wands, and that's through the Cups, the Alchemy of the Cups, and the Three of Cups are abundance, the connection between the masculine, feminine, child, body, mind, soul, heavens, the earth, through us. And our friendships are connected to our faith and having faith in the path, having faith in the divine, having faith in our divine blueprint, having faith in our eternal, internal map. And notice how I said eternal there? Hmm. There's a reason that that just came out of my mouth. Faith and the ninth house directly connects us to the child, the six of cups. And that is, yes, the child creating here now. We freed the child. And this is what we're doing. We're freeing the child so the child can create. This is part of how we're going to raise our vibration and really heal. Faith and the child are directly connected to the sun and spirit. And we know we're working with spirit right now in order to expand. And this is our connection to the sun, but also the moon. This is connected to the eighth house, our endings and beginnings. And we are beginning again, but our beginning was birthed through the past. We had to birth it through the ending. And we know we're working with very, very, very ancient knowledge and information right now. And we're activating it from within to without. It's connected to Mesopotamia and the cradle of life. And that's connected to Black Moon Lilith. She's made her appearance. Appearance, the destruction before the creation. We're going to destroy to create, guys. And that's connected to the first house, the body. We're working with the body. We have to destroy habitual patterning that is keeping us held down something's broken something needs repairing in here and it's time to fix it so the grand cross is here connected to the mystery to the unknown and we're being provoked we're being provoked in order to destroy to create and we're destroying because we're going home to our life's purpose the north node so we are destroying what needs to be knocked out from the self our life's debts, our karmic patterning. This is about our new patterning. And everything right now is connected to the 10th house, the world, our expansion, the grid of the collective, what we came here to do within and without. And this is connected to the earth center, is connected to our center. And this is also symbolism for removing the layers of self in order to get within. And it's all being created within the sphere this is all happening within the sphere there's a connection once again to the feminine energy but we're expanding it with the masculine and it's time it's time right here and we know we're sensing we're using the water element sensing this is about our intuition that's the message so i put the message all back within these cards and this is what it's connected to because this is what i was preparing to have here Everything right now is connected to the earth and Capricorn, I use. But we're changing the I to we. And that's how we're working with the threes. That's how this is all happening with the three of pentacles, the three of swords, 
the Three of Cups and the Three of Wands, we're working with the threes. We're working with connection. We're working with making connections. We're making connections everywhere. We're disconnecting everywhere and we're making connections everywhere. And that is connected to what's happening here. We're going within. You can even see. We're going within. We're going within to connect to the high priestess. She has the information we're seeking. And it's connected to the new moon being in Gemini. And that egg. That egg is connected to... This is the cosmic egg of transformation. This is what we're, we're working with right now. It's about the reflection we're going to see when we face our sorrows. The five of cups. We're going to go within and face something deep within. And something's going to be reflected back to us. And it's going to help get us back into working order. This is connected to the messenger of air. And in this deck, it's the messenger of Leviathans. And you guys, this part of this information is to the from the messages and to the divine feminine and masculine new moon in super new moon in Gemini reading. And I'll link that down below. And yes, this is a super new moon. The moon, we know we just had the full and it was the last of the full moons till super full moons until April. But this is a new moon, and that's because she's still orbiting the closest to Earth. So we can see her. She's very illuminated. She's still helping us to do shadow work. This mechanism is symbolism for us, and something within us needs to be recalibrate, recalibrated, repaired, mended, and it has to do with the connection between the mind and the body. And we're doing this through the soul with the spirit. And we're going to get ourselves in working order here. And right now, it's the removal of what's toxic. It's the removal of what's not ours. It's the removal of everything that's got to go that's not authentic self. And is not allowing that child to be part of our universe. And anything that's lowering our vibration... To the point where we can't raise our vibration up to see what we need to see. To do what we need to do to get to where we're going. Because this is about new earth. So we're working with the th our three of pentacle pals. And the three of earth. The actual earth right here. The matter. To go really fast. And this mechanism is going to shape shift. Right here it's a bug. It's a beetle. And that is... Our connection to our ancients, Mesopotamia, the, the cradle of civilization. And we took a trip there, didn't we, guys? And boy, was that ever enjoyable. A field trip. guys that join me at that field trip and if you haven't down if you haven't yet i will link that trip down below now 
This vehicle is connected to love. And the Prince of Cups. And the Prince of Cups is connected to La Luna. And this is what they're showing me is representation of what the masculine and feminine are doing. The masculine is working with the vibration of unconditional love and going forth with it. The dolphin energy also. And this is understanding we're not going to harm self in order to heal with others. We're going to be able to be there for others without harming ourselves. There is a serpent within that cup. There's transformation, connection to spirit, connection to our gifts. And the feminine is finding, she's restoring balance. She's restoring balance for us here. This is connected to the equality. This is being able to use the masculine and feminine energy in order to illuminate those lighthouses. She's understanding she's both. That's what she's doing. She's understanding that she is the whole. She just has to see it. She has to stop looking down and start looking within. And if we need to look up to look within, if we need to look up to have the, the heavens reflect back to us, use the sky as a tool. Use Mother Earth as the tools that they are meant to be used for. They're healing. Now within the moon, we are connecting to new earth, the star. That's what's happening here. So within, within self, we're connecting to new earth. And that's where the healing that new earth has to offer. It's happening within. And we are connecting to the energy of Empress, the Empress. This is Venus and love. And this is what will be birthed. And this is all going to be connected to the reading that we're going within. But now we're going to... I'm going to put all these cards back and get a, a shuffle, but before I do, we're going to get a quick message to start things off just from the moon, and then I'm going to shuffle these up and we're going to see what's happening. Picture and passions. We're working with the water energies again. All right, guys, everything is ready to go. Now I must say the energy that I'm feeling is very drained. I really feel like everybody's in extremism energy is still right now. Other people are very drained and very tired of everything because we're really in the midst of the shift. The world will never be the, the same again. We know this now. And or our over abundance of energy being built up because it's not being worn out worn off so in this streams what we're going to close them in that's what's happening right now we're transmuting all of this stuff right now and it's very draining and much of it is the shadows the shadows are just being pushed to the surface this is connected everything to do right now with the indigo child from the star seed tarot and the indigo child is connected to indigo children, we know. And many of us being misunderstood. Many of us star seeds, twin flames being misunderstood. And now we're going to heal from that. And a lot of being misunderstood has caused a lot of harm for us. But that's why we have to know thyself. And we have to protect thyself with a dolphin energy and we have to honor thyself and we have to let ourselves grow and expand and now though our what they've shown me is how we're going to expand especially because we're doing all this inner child healing and working with the child it's like we're just going to amp everything up we're going to be so connected to our gifts because this ha is connected to the solar deity our spirit the divine and the, the voltage, the high voltage energy that's going to really raise our vibrations. It's going to be like, we're just, you know, pop some nitro and we're going to go up, up, up. And it's going to be incredible. But this has to do with the connection to the past, the dawns of time, what they're showing me. 
you know, and the our ancients as well as Mesopotamia and the Earth's DNA is connected to our DNA. There is a direct link and they're sh they've been showing it to me and there's a connection between our DNA, the Earth's DNA and crystal energy, something to do with the energy of the Earth and our energy. And, then, and some sort of new frequency of some sort. Now, of course, that's all the information that I have access to at the moment. And remember, here at the channel, we're always expanding off the knowledge because we're always seeing things from a different level, from a different angle, from a different perspective. And we're expanding off of our knowledge. And that's where it's also been very dangerous within the past. You know, if a teacher must know everything, a school must know everything, it must be all right. But that's not really the basis of learning. That sets us up in a in a trap, in an ego trap. That teacher has to know everything under the sun. Well, how can they? What if we're expanding off of it? Because we're, we're going to be in growth and then we're going to argue with people. We're going to tear people down. Well, this information, that information. Guys, we have to use some common sense. Yes, I know. We're not just going to have people running off with shenanigans. A guy making, you know, that's been... being silly and is not just going to destroy all this useful information from with the divine. We have to just use some common sense and slow down a little bit. We have discussed channel messages. There's a deep connection between, between Scorpio and Pisces. And here it is through the planets. This is connected to Pluto and Neptune and it is our connection to cancer and we know that the north node of the moon has gone from cancer to Gemini. The combining in this mansion of the two outer planets powerful Pluto and ethereal Neptune suggests enormous imagination and sensitivity sensitivity together with an idealistic desire to spread your beliefs and dreams to the whole world. And there it is. This mansion signifies compassion and positive assistance to those in trouble. And this would mean that Neptune and Pisces are helping us to also do work with the body because we're understanding we are ethereal. We're more than just a body, but we have to make the connection to the body there's there's a disconnect somehow now what they're showing me is that in order to remove what is toxic and not allowing us to see the connections we're going to be using the energy of Scorpio and Pisces as well as they're also going to allow us to see the connections and understand the connections and create with what is happening the information we are seeking within the unknown. So this energy is helping to cleanse us with the Six of Cups. This is like a purification, but as well as expand with us and birth anew from the unknown. So let's take a closer look at the card and see the symbolism for what's happening. Two water, water energies coming together in order to help us to transform and create the whole. This is very, very important information. And the fact that we've received it here is really mind blowing. And just goes to show we are on the right path. We're following our signs. We're following the knowledge that has been seeking in, that we have been seeking within the unknown. And we're expanding off of it here. These energies are key right now in the shift. And we're adding them to the energy of air. And we know this is connected to the lovers. So we're adding these to the energy of opposites in order to expand the whole. And it's part of the whole transformation. And it's thanks to Pluto and Neptune. This card is all about helping others. It's putting us into mission work. And it's connected to our passions. 
So our passions are leading us forth to mission work. And you know what? We know that we use our passions to heal from the devil energies. This all makes complete sense. Everything. And we're going to see what Scorpio and Pisces has to say for creating with passion. Passion. Connection to Scorpio. The moon in this most passionate of signs is helpless in the driving momentum of feelings that are engendered in this phase. Nothing can stop the extreme nature of emotions here. Well, the, we're going to really need to use this with the Five of Cups. This, like, this is just blowing it out. This is clearing it out. This is like what they discuss. You're facing your fears. You're facing your sorrows. You're facing the negative. You're facing what's not working. That's what that's all about. With the moon in Pisces, the gap between the imagination and reality appears narrower than usual. And you're swept up in the overriding emotion of the moment and able to turn back. Now we're going to be swept up in all the emotions that Scorpio is helping us to connect with and feel. And this is going to amp up our intuition. This is also going to though amp up what needs to be cleansed, what needs to be detoxified from within. So we need these energies, our passions to help us heal from the devil energies. Can Ethan just All right, guys, I love these moon cards. Competitiveness. Doris, I swear to God. I guess I shouldn't be swearing to God. You know, I never understood that. I swear to God. Why can't we swear to God? I didn't swear. I didn't actually swear. But our words have power, hey? And I, our words, I'm learning that more and more. Wedding. Lilith, wedding. Guru. I should have checked this before. But you know what, guys? So many freaking interruptions all the time. Every time I sit down to do a reading. It could be the house. You could hear a pin drop in it. And then all of a sudden, I sit down to do a reading. And everyone's there. I, I'm, I'm sure it's the energy. They flock to the energy. It's just the energy that's created here. And then I get frazzled. Because I know that if these readings are too long, no one's going to want to join us here. And, you know, I already talk a lot as it is, but this is the path. And I have to let it unfold and let it happen. And sometimes I think that, you know, if everything were just to happen perfectly, what fun would that be? Like, you know, I would love for you guys just to see how things un exactly unfold. I would I've always said, like, I wish your camera was following me. Because how it exactly unfolds. It's, wow, like, I can't not believe. I can't not believe. It blows my mind on an everyday basis. And I wish you guys could see it and be a part of it. But it's like there's always something happening or something at whichever moment. And I'm feeling like the magic was taking out of, taken out of that. And I wanted to share the magic with you. But I have to understand, you know, this is part of my, my path and my magic and me believing. And you guys have to go off and you guys have to have your path and you guys have to go on and make your magic and believe and this is about you believing and if everything were just to just happen perfectly the way you know all the time would we believe i don't know if we would i think that it just kind of happens the way that it happens and in speaking of spiritual expansions and how we feel one way you know we've been discussing how we feel one day can change to how we feel the next when we're expanding and that because the information that we have access to at whatever vibration so we don't need to argue anymore we can just end this arguing we can end our competitiveness and there's lilith to destroy to create and it's to get to where we're going. It has to do with our connections. 
And right now we're working on healing with the devil energies and lust and codependency and even just ourselves. You know, what within our everyday lives is keeping us from feeling unconditional love and sensuality? This is about our passions, unconditional love and sensuality and the feminine being allowed to feel sensual, to feel connected, to feel loved and the masculine doing so as well. As we know, we have both energies within us. But then the masculine honoring that of the feminine, understanding she needs to feel sensual, she needs to feel connected, she needs to feel her desires, she needs to feel love, she needs to feel like a part of things. And this is a quality, this is being a part of things. This is connected to the lover's card and, you know, marriage. But this is not marriage within the... Dark Ages BS. These are two people coming together with unconditional love and they're creating and they're expanding. This is a different kind. It's because these people are connected. And this is definitely twin flame love. You're, they're showing me that this is, this is one. This is of one. And it has to do with our spiritual gifts, our expansion. Because what ha what's happening when we connect to the child we're amping up our gifts and our transformations and it has to do with our principles we're working with our principles right now and we're working on making sense of the principles connected to new earth that's part of the information that we're seeking that they're letting me have access to now what this is connected to, this is connected to knowledge, school, what we do here, school for the fool. This is also connected to Mesopotamia, the cradle of life. Remember, everything is connected. And this is connected to the information we are seeking within the unknown. And it has to do with our principles. And these are the principles of new earth. That's what we're after. There's a connection there. Well... I dropped this card for a reason, so let's find out what it is. Stone. From Taurus to Taurus, ruled by Mercury and Saturn. Four steps lead to a large, very solid and secure but plain looking rectangular building with a small outbuilding on either side. It is part of a large pale colored stone tablet which rises above it. On the pale stone, strange symbols are inscribed, representing close family secrets and traditions above the tablet. And bending over it is the crowned figure of a woman with long blonde hair. Around her neck, she wears a paper-like garnet containing writing. Her arms hang down on either side of the tablet as if to embrace the stone. the eye or head of Taurus. Traditionally, when the moon was located in this mansion, it was said to cause the destruction of buildings and to create discord within families. It's crumbling. Old earth is crumbling. It's official for new earth to rise. Mercury conjoined with Saturn in Taurus denotes a serious attitude towards possessions. Saturn traditionally represents ancestors, ancestors and family background. Together with the security of inheritance, this lunar mansion is strongly material and possessive in mood. This is incredible because this is what's happening. We're breaking away from old Earth's beliefs, the patterning there, to create the patterning of new Earth. But it was from the old to the new. The path is being birthed through there. And that's, this is even connected to, remember, our ancients and Mesopotamia. And it's even going to go back as far back to the dawns of time. In this mansion, the card is drawn. It suggests you have a stubborn, protective attitude to what you see as personal property which may be a family business or simply strong family traditions. And it's, it's all of these things. 
this has to do with our family lineage and healing the curse and family, you know, karma that's connected to our family. Your attitude towards this matter is inflexible and old-fashioned. The way in which you have always done things is the only way. And that's where we're breaking away from sticking to what's familiar. We're going to the new. And everyone's always afraid of the new. The new. You know, I really, we've already discussed this here. I really despise when people start going off about newer, you know, new agers, new earthers, new thisers, new thaters. It's because it's new. We got to stick to tradition and always just ripping it down. We always rip down the new. What? Because we're afraid of it. And it's new. So we can't always know what we're doing in the new. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes. Oh, that person made a mistake. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, because this is new. They have to expand off of it. They have to build off of it. But that doesn't mean that there's not truth there. And it doesn't mean it's not part of the whole. And it's new. And, you know, this reminds me very much, like, even, you know, lots of times my accent comes out. Just, you know. And thinking back to, like, my spiritual expansion. And when you first met me, you wouldn't have even like known me. I would have, I was always preaching. There's no such thing as God. It's all about science, Darwinism. We just evolved. We just came here to live, grow, die. Okay. We might as well F it. We might as well just hang out with the devil. We might as well just do whatever we want. F it. No one's looking. Frick this. This is all a joke. This hurts. This is a bull baloney. No one's creating with integrity here. Nobody cares. I'm not going to care. But then after my spiritual awakening, whoo, hello, divine. I give, a, I give an F. I care. I matter. You matter. We matter. This matters. The divine's here. And now, you know, I'm just this whole new person. And this is what a spiritual expansion is about. And it's connected to our family lineage. And breaking apart from the curse that's there. From fitting into the mold. We're breaking this stone down. And we're strong enough to do so. With help from our ancients. And you know, I had to go against the grain and I'm speaking of myself so you guys can resonate with this. I had to go against the grain. I had to go against my family. I had to go against what we've done because it was time to create a new. I had to break my family curse. My son will not go on with that in his life. It's broken here. It, start, it's, it, it ended with here with me. And now we'll go forth. And I'm going to teach him all the things that I'm learning so that his path can be a very different path from mine. And it already starts, you know, I can already see where he's been separated. Because he was born before my awakening. And now where I'm going to work on integrating him, feeling connected. Connected to the divine, connected to the all, connected to me, connected to his family. Because I could already see the patterning of disconnections that even I was putting at play within his life. And even, you know, too, letting him have a whole bunch of Slurpees, letting him have, oh, he's just a kid. He can have that another piece of cake. Or he can just not realizing the harm that I was doing to my own son. And understanding that, you know what, what he puts within him matters also. Now, I still let him have fun, but I've really tried to do it within a creative way. And we still know that our children are their own little people. They're, they're their own little people. So they have their paths too. So I, it's not for me to control. It's just, how do I teach him? I'm a teacher. At the end of the day, I'm a teacher. And I love people. I always want to share what I know to help others. So thank you guys for joining me to do just that. This reading is probably going to be 500 hours long. Let's get on with it. Let's see what's happening. That literally almost shot me in the eye. Yeah, it's time. It's just time. And we're going to have, before we go within, and I can hardly wait to go within, I'm just, like, I would have already gone within if we could have, but I, of course, I have to do things in a certain manner, in a way. I have to listen. And we're going to meet up with the devil, and we're going to discuss how we're going, you know, to remove what's not ours, what's connected to this. This is our knowledge. This is our knowledge, though. This is our schooling. 
This is how we're going to learn. And we're going to learn with the universe. We're going to learn with the divine through us. It's not like I had to go sign up for 16 classes. Oh, putting all these burdens back on your back. No, no, this isn't like that. This is what you're called to do. This is like, you know, Yod. The path to our destiny was not the path that we thought we were taking. It was all these mishaps that taught us all the stuff along the way. And that's why we have to learn how to make mistakes. We have to learn how to let us make mistakes because how do you learn? Repetitiveness. Repetitiveness. Repeat, repeat, repeat. That's how we learn things here. Because we just keep falling back asleep. Keep falling back asleep. You know, we have that default programming, you know, speaking about my accent sometimes coming on. Because you know what? I, I've always naturally spoke with an accent. Always having to work proper with speaking proper English. My default programming comes back on. Plus, I just love speaking with my accent anyways. It's uniquely a part of me. We expand. We start learning how to read ourselves. We start learning how to read the energies. We start learning how to read the situations. And right now, we're reading heartache. It's time to deal with this. It's time to deal with our three of swords. It's time to deal with our sorrows. They're causing us to feel without. In lack of. They're causing us our disconnects they're causing us to be caught in fear we're not creating with love right now they're in the back of our mind even though we can't we don't think they're in the back of our mind with the king of swords all right i just wanted to see where we're going because speaking of lack of there it is we're going to move forth with our truths with the king of swords and we're not going to that's facing our heartache i'm even going to put it like this look at what he's done He's faced his heartache, now it's broken up with his truth. And how did he find his truth? He needed to reflect. We have to find our truth first. We're going to reflect, so we're going to deal, of course, with our three of swords. We're going to add the sword of clarity, the sword of the light. We're going to raise our vibration right here. So we're going to deal with where we're feeling the lack of in the five of pentacles, the disconnections. In the matter... The earth. Where are we feeling disconnected? We're not connected to something here. And look at that. The feminine's even like she's fallen over and she's just huddled up in pain. And the masculine's sitting there and he doesn't know what to do to help her. Because he, she's got to go within. She's got to help herself from within. And once she helps herself from within, everything else is possible. And this connects us to the Ace of Wands. The masculine energy, the God Spark. And we're going to use this as strength right now with the Nine of Wands. And we're going to use this because this is connected to the Moon and the North Star home. We're going to hit our mark. We're going to hit our aim. We're going home. And we're going home because... We found balance thanks to the Luna. And we found balance with this new moon in Gemini. The energies are here for us to restore balance. We know. The lovers, the opposites, uniting to become one. This is the time. But it's, it's connected to the Ace. And the Ace is connected to the expansion of what the feminine in is creating within the sphere. So the feminine seeking the knowledge to expand it within the know within the unknown within the void the sphere gains access to it it's right there within the sphere we're going to add the wand we're going to spark it we're going to light it with our flame and it's going to expand that's what they're showing me this is going to give us strength and we're going forth to our 10 of pentacles and that's what this is about our fortune increase our Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles. We're expanding through the earth right now. And literally, I love, we're expanding through the earth. The trees of our truth, as well as, this is our connection to the actual earth. And this is even connection to our family lineage. Look, there's a family tree right there, even that representation. And what has been removed that's not yours? 
This is not the tree where we're adding all the people, where we're adding all the beliefs, where we're adding all the fingerprints. This is the tree where we're removing all the people, where we're removing all the beliefs, where we're removing all the fingerprints, we're removing everything that's not us, and we're just left hanging on this tree of self. What is you? And we're going to cut away everything that's not us, because this is about mastering ourselves right now. And for you guys that are really understanding this and are far along enough on the path, I'm sure you've already done much of this work already and understanding it's not personal we're not personally cutting people out of our lives we're not personally attacking people that's not what this is about this is about love light healing expansion this is about you know what your patterning cannot be within within me right now this is about my patterning my expansion because your patterning right now is making me sick keeping me stuck keeping me jammed up keeping me from raising my vibration, keeping me from living my best life, from being my authentic self, from my life's purpose, from walking my path. So we're going to go within. We're going to use the energy of the hermit. And this is connecting to the energy of the ancients. And this is how we're going to break apart what needs to be broken apart and put back together what needs to be put back together. And we, the five of cups and the devil. When we deal with our sorrows, we're going to face the devil head on and what's keeping us separate and what is not allowing us to manifest. That's a black spider web. There's no light on it. We're creating with the shadow energies. And this is not the abundance that we're looking for. This is not abundance. See that devil? He has our heart. And we know we're taking our heart back. We must go within the five of cups. Within the five of cups, this is where we connect to the two through the three. We're going to do some math. We're going to do some alchemy of the cups. We're going to create the two. By moving the three over here, we're going to create some connection. We're not going to worry about the equality. We're not going to worry about the connection. We don't need to worry about it. It's within us. What we need to worry about is making the connections of us. Body, mind, soul. Masculine, feminine, child. Heavens, the earth, through us. And everything else in between. Everything else we're working with. Our energy, our patterning. That's connected to the princess of wands. And look at that raisin vibration with the wand. And now we have the masculine and feminine energies. Mother and father energies coming together in order for us to unite and raise our vibes. And we've restored balance. Oh, I picked up two cards. I don't know what it is. It's going to be a surprise for me. The Princess of Cups. Hello, Princess of Cups. The Six of Pentacles and the Princess of Cups. There's that dolphin energy. And look, look at how we're interacting with that dolphin. That is so inspiring. And now we've restored equality with the all. We're creating with love. We're creating with unconditional love. And look, we're being gifted. We're being given back. And guess we are, Ten of Cups. Oh my goodness, and I picked up two cards again, and I'm so happy and so lit. Guys, this reading, right even here, we can stop right here. This has been a pretty little present with a nice little bow tied up around it. Everything, everything's all here. And we're we're going to use the Eight of Wands energy right now. That's key, because this is that car starting. This is working with our Three of Pentacle Pals through the Threes. To get that high voltage energy to really get that car with nitro. We're really going fast, but we're going fast up. And it's all right now to do with the five of wands. That's our conflict. And dominion. Where do we feel separate? We connect to the eight of cups because we're going to the two. And it's through the queen right now. Yep, we're working through the queen of, queen of pentacles, the earth to ground it. And there's wish fulfillment. And this is the key. The magician is here. And the magician right now, we're working with the energy of the magician. The magician, we're going to be seeing the magician a lot right now because we're going to be manifesting. That's what they're showing me. It's all about the cup right now and the other elements. And the, the connection between the masculine and feminine, the energy of the whole zodiac... 
the serpent will no longer eat its own tail. We're healing. This is ending karmic loops. Patterning that creates karmic loops. This has to do with Aquarius. This has to do with the building of the golden ages. What else is it connected to? It's connected to the eye. The eye of Horus. And Black Moon Lilith as well. So it's connected to the stone right here in Black Moon Lilith. This is what they're showing me. And we're going to destroy to create. And it is connected to Pisces, the Dark Ages, to the Golden Ages. And we expand with the world. The universe. That's our new patterning. Now something's being activated within the magician. We're going to find out what. Guys, there it is. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. Solar deity. And I really feel like, believe it or not, after all that magic, thank you, spirit. That there's another card in here this one the seeker of orbs and the four of crystals restoring balance through the moon there it is and we're going back to one with star seed And that's allowing us to connect to the two and the love that we need to have. The creation of unconditional love, the vibration. This is what's happening. There's that high voltage energy, the rays and the vibration. Through the seeker of orbs. And this is the seeker of swords, the seeker of the truth. She's seeking the truth through the dark with the light. And she's going up. Her seeking the truth with the light in the dark is already raising her vibration. She's also going with the divine. And this is connected to our Merkaba. That's allowing us to create stability. This is solar plexus healing through the sacral and a recalibration to the root. And that's what we're working on. Because then when all that happens, there's a recalibration to the heart. And this is about love. We need La Luna. Here she is. She's helping us out to connect to Starseed, us, our true selves. This is going to allow us to actively manifest. We know we're working with the threes. There's a three of wands, and that's connecting us to the two of flames. And this is connecting us to our counterpart and love. There is love, the adept no, sorry. Yeah, the Adept of Chalices. The Knight of Cups. And we're working with our clarity. With healing from our heartbreak. There's the Four of Swords. Look at how heavy that is. Look at how heavy that is. We need to clear that. And we're going to clear it because we're going forth to the Ten. And right now... The Ten of Pentacles is connected to the Eight. We're working through the Eight. From the 5D to the 3D. And that means we're going to move away from the shadows. The devil is here. There's the dolphin energy right there. Look, the dolphin is smart enough, right? Intelligence, using their emotional intelligence to move away. It's time to go. 
and we're moving away from inner conflict look at how th this is the five of swords look at what that that's confusion we're gonna move away from confusion and what's that confusion connected to the shadows the devil energies and we've received this message many times here on this channel they're facing the masculine and feminine have come together within front of the sphinx there's our connection to our ancients and ancient egypt right there now they've come together both of their shadows are there there's also a black spider web two black two black spider webs making their appearance here this is symbolism for not creating with the shadows for creating with the light and something's being illuminated here. And it's connected to the tower. The tower is knocking off the shadow energies right there. The, the towers, the divines come in to take out the shadows. But it's through the seeker of crystals. And that is our connection to the earth. We're grounding our truths to the earth. Because now we've gone from the seeker of orbs to the seeker of crystals. So we're grounding our truth from the heavens to the earth through us. And yes, of course, it's connected to the star, to our ancients, to our healing. And that is connected to our activation. We're seeking the seeker of chalices, the seeker of cups. And we've come full circle. The seeker of chalices is connected to the sage of chalices. So now that is the queen of cups. And the queen of cups is allowing us to go within the fantasy world, our illusions, and see our truth. Because that's where we're going to add the energy of the master of orbs. And this is the king of swords. And we've also received that card confirmation right there. Right there. We're going to add our truth within the void, within the, within the sphere. Look, it's right there. He brought the sword of clarity, the sword of light within the void, within the truth, within the matter of the situation. Now it's changed. Now it's expanded. And now we've gone forth to the seeker of flames and we're connecting because we've ended karmic. We've ended our karmic loop just by right here, bringing our truth within the void in order to create with it. All right, that's where they're telling me to stop. Because there is a message here between the Master of Orbs and the Seeker of Flames and the Queen of Cups, the Sage of Chalices, and the Moon, and it's connected to our karma. Yeah. Void, of course, moon. Missing. This is where the moon is in transit. We, She's not giving us in any information. She's not. We have to trust. We have to have faith. So we're having faith and it's connected to the sixth house, our routine. And this is connected to the messages to the masculine and feminine, which is connected to this reading. And this is what we're working with. We're going to apply our spheres of knowledge to this cocoon. What we're already creating and we're going to expand it and we're going to create a new we're going to birth something and look once again too we have the sphere and the square the masculine and feminine coming together to restore wholeness and it's connected to the water element sensing we know we're sensing we're using the energy of virgo to analyze the pieces to make sense of what we're sensing because we're going to heal and transform from our truths with Chiron healing and Pluto transformation and Saturn, our truths. And our truths are connected to our heartache. This is the three of swords. And we now have a message. Our third house is here and it's connected to our life's debts. And that's connected to Jupiter and our abundance. So something here is 
being activated for us to see how to move away from the south node to the north node and it has something to do with the 12th house and escape that's our connection to pisces uranus genius and that's connected to new earth and the age of aquarius and our moon the soul us and now we're going to ask the cards what? Well, and there's our recalibration to our roots, through our roots, with our desires. The fire energy. Because we know we're becoming friends. And it all started off where the moon and the sun joined up forces in order to create our great revolutions, the change. The change. All right. What's being activated here? Oh, the two of engines. So that is the solar eclipse, our revolution. That's connected to that. Well, hello. Of course. The Seven of Leviathans, which is the Seven of Swords. We go from the Seven of Swords to the Seven of Engines, which is the Seven of Wands, healing. So we're going to go from confusion to healing, trickery to healing, not understanding to understanding in order to Yeah, you can see these cards are connected. You can even see these cards are connected. And it's connected to Cosmic Blueprint and the Two of Engines. And everything goes back right now to the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is helping us to heal our minds with Brazen Head right here. Brazen Head is where we're what we're working with this is what we're doing we're destroying to create look at that's being destroyed you can see that this mechanism here has been destroyed and it says 777 it's been destroyed within this card it's gone so our illusions have been removed through healing and we know our healing has to do with our truth right now. And it has to do with a recalibration from our mind to our body. With our soul, well, through our soul, with our spirit. We're following our synchronicities and signs. We're going within. This has to do with what we'll be discussing in our next readings. And the two of engines, being the two of wands, is our change. We, we, we're manifesting our revolutions. They're here. This is like time travel, forward movement to a whole new space, to new earth. And it is connected to our cosmic, the cosmic blueprint. All right, so let's get a look at this up close and personal, guys. Of course, I'm going to be studying this more when we meet up in future readings. But this reading cannot be five hours long. Here, look, and now it's gone down. And now we're going to connect to us and the universe. And that's what's happening here. So now we're connecting to this mechanism here, Cosmic Blueprint. And this is connected to the world and our expansions. And I want you to see, once we complete this and get this in working order, that is this all closed up. So look, we're working on parts on the inside. More... Now, messages showing us we're working on the parts on the inside in order to restore, repair, mend. So this is functioning and look at with all that energy, two of engines in order to manifest. And this is through change. This is our great revolutions. This is connected to solar eclipse energy. Where La Luna and the sun meet up to expand. All right. Let's just get the information of Cosmic Blueprint, all right?
The cosmic blueprint enables things to find their ultimate achievement and realize the wholeness of their hidden promise. Of their hidden promise. Guys, there is... Wow. The wholeness of their hidden promise. This is connected to going within and what is happening. By synthesizing the gifts of all the elements, it opens possibilities to their greatest extent. And there's our connection to the magician and manifestation. As one of the primary gods of the machine, the cosmic blueprint, and this is gods of the machine. This is connection to the divine. This is just what how it's being the how it's being used within this tarot because this is the steampunk tarot okay but i've been called to use these cards for a specific reason because we're showing our connection to what is artificial so we can go to what's natural and i've been called to use these cards to do so as we know we connect to the energies of the opposites in order to see what we need to see and heal and expand this being connected to machines and now, how are we going to get to what's natural? And it's showing us. There's something being reflected back to us. The cosmic blueprint brings unity and harmonious fulfillment. It is encoded within all things and beings. And its gift is the flowering of the promised potential. By transcending the limits, the cosmic blueprint is able to draw upon every resource and find the point where they can combine and be made available to all. So look at that. We're combining all the elements through us being made available to all. When you pass beyond your own limitations and stand in your confidence, you can attain your goals harmoniously. And we're not standing in ego. We're standing in our confidence. The commonwealth of the Imperium is held together by mutual support and a collective commitment, inviting you to step beyond the merely personal and enter into all of it. And look at that. We're being invited to enter into all of it right there. There's the invitation. Thank you to the Cosmic Blueprint. This is connected to others. We reach accumulation and attainment or perfection in this cycle by moving into the center where the recognition of rewards and honors is extended and look at that we're connecting to the all to the universe through the center more messages the integration of your potential with the needs of the world creates the perfect medium for your talents and there it is our needs connected to the needs of the universe, not the needs of the matrix, the needs of the universe. And there it is. We're restoring connection. This is beautiful. This is lit. Oh my God, I might almost start doing a song and dance. This is all understanding that this is going to amp up our gifts, but our obligations are what's dragging us down. This is that Ten of Wands energy. This is the matrix. The matrix and our obligations within the matrix to keep the matrix running are weighing us down. We need to quit this. So blockages to clear. Your triumph over challenges, fears, or limitations seems very distant. It's time to choose action rather than inertia or stagnation. Contemplate your heart's desire, and there's our desires and how we're healing from the devil energies, and make one practical step towards it. Don't be afraid of combining with others in order to achieve what you want. And there's our three of pentacle pals. We're, in, we're combining with others to achieve our abundance. And this is why I love connecting here to heal, harmonize, and raise the vibration with you guys. Thank you for doing just that. This is also connected to an overprotective environment or relationship is hemming you in. And look at that, guys. Like, look at that. Overprotective environment is hemming you in. Like, spirit is speaking to us right now. I mean, come on, for the times we're in. And this is of all of to do with perfectionism. 
it ultimately ultimately disappoints because perfectionism is connected to what's artificial. Remember, we learn through our mistakes, our repetitiveness. That's natural. That's human. That's connected to the earth as well. And this is all about clinging to limitations saps the savor of success. So we're not clinging to old earth. We're going to what's new. We're expanding. And that means we have to expand with our knowledge and not fear what's new. Getting out of your own way. You can see the whole picture. So we're going to get out of our own way. We're going to see the whole picture. The opportunity, and this is the gift that this brings, the cosmic blueprint, the opportunity to bring everything together in completion. It's something offered rarely, but yet also available every day. Where are you called to bring your ideas home and ground them? And there it is. We're bringing our ideas home to ground them. So we need to be called there first. We need to understand where we're being, where have we been called, where we're we going. And that's why we need our intuition to be able to seek. So let's look at this like this. This mechanism must be removed. And this is what we're going in. We're removing this. This is our connection to the devil energies is what they're showing me. And once we remove this, we see what we need to see. Something is revealed to us. Something is reflected to us. And it's part of us. And it's always been part of us. But we need to have access to it. And this is connected to seeing through our illusions in the matrix. The trickery. But this is the sword's energy. And that's why we need you, Gemini. We need you for this part of the transformation. Because we need to see through these illusions. What we're going to do is... Now that we've removed it, we've removed this, we're working with our divine blueprint. And that's the connection right here to the cosmic blueprint. And after removing what's not of self, what's not us, and has been programmed within us of artificial, the matrix, we now are going to get this device working. And how we're going to get this device murky, working, and of course, I said murking for a reason. This is our connection to the Merkaba. And the Merkaba means everything. It's connected to that high voltage horse. It's connected to our healing. It's connected to our transformations. And it's connected to who we really are, authentic self. And it, there is a connection between us and the earth, our ancients, the dawns of time, and Mesopotamia here. Remember, we're using the elements. Now, this is where the elements are going to come into play. We're going to use the three of pentacles. We're going to use the three of wands. Because it's time to heal from the three of swords. Because it's all about the three of cups and our abundance, our connection. This now going to be connected to Tesla's work and we all know Nikola Tesla what a what an incredible man when we are working with the equations that built the universe the patterning we have three six and nine three equating to vibration and that's what we're working with right now we're working on creating the vibrations. That's what we need. The sixes equating to frequency. So we're going to go from three vibration to six frequency. And nine, that equals energy. So we've created the energy. But we create the energy through the vibration and the patterning of the vibration. We need the frequency. We've created the energy. And what happens after you create the energy? You manifest the what you've created from within to without, from the 5D to the 3D. And we're getting this in working order because it's time. We're really about to expand and shapeshift things around here. Well, let's go, guys. Wow. That's all I'm going to say. Wow. All right.
it's all the same cards again. This is, wow. Five of fossils, donkey. Five of pentacles. There's our lack of, there's our disconnections. We're going to switch into the sea turtle, nurturer of shells. And there is the queen of cups. We're going to use the queen of cups to heal from our disconnects. And that right now is connected to the nine of feathers, which is the crow. The nine of swords, our fear, our cruelty. Our karmic patterning, keeping us stuck in karmic loops, right? That's why we have to heal with the mind. We have to heal with the mind because of what's going on right here. And that's connected to, we know, the seven of feathers, which is... The Seven of Swords, which is the Seven of Leviathans. And there's the key. Magpie has the key to what's happening right here. And that's connected to the Seer of Feathers, which is the Seer of Swords. So we need to see something within what's happening here in order to destroy this mechanism. Of the old to the new and it's connected to whale the all-encompassing and these are the same cards so we're connecting to the universe whatever we're destroying here this is the matrix and this is this device is keeping us separate from the universe we're being separated through the universe. We're being separated from the universe through the matrix and we're going to destroy that connection. And that's what we're doing here. That's what we've done here. And once again too, it's connected to the two of wands. Triple confirmation. Right, let's just get a sacred mirrors oracle and say goodbye. Love these cards. They're art. They're true art. This is going to have to do with our reflection and what's being reflected back to us. Okay, they're telling me to charge them. I had one other deck over here and I wasn't going to use it because I know that this is getting a little lengthy, but we're going to. It's just going to speak and we're going to see what's happening here. This has to do with what's connected to our past within the matrix. It's going to be connected to this, what's keeping us disconnected from the universe through the matrix. Judgment. That's the freeing of our truth through the feminine energy. We know the free, we free the masculine through our sacral chakra. The feminine through the throat chakra. Temperance is here. And that's to do alchemy between the mother and father energies, the wands and the cups. There's our metamorphosis from what's old to new. We need strength to do so. And we begin again. It's connected to the king of coins. And the king of coins is connected to the empress. And Venus. And what we're birthing. And it's love. We're creating love through healing. This is where it's happening. We have the initiative of cups moving forth with love. There's the two of pentacles, the balance between the dark and the light, and we've created new patterning. In order to heal with the eight of pentacles, we are healing right now. We've created new patterning that's connected to our routine and healing. And right now, that is connected to the Adept of Wands, 
the queen of wands and she's connected to her ancients she has the key right now to what's going on and being created within the void and the connection to everlasting life and it is connected to lo and behold the nine of swords we're gonna face our fears of the unknown of the separateness of the matrix of everything so we can heal and connect and once we do look we're connecting right there we make the connections we need to make in order to birth what we're birthing with the empress and that is going to be connected to this message well look and this just fell over bridge be a bridge and solution. We're being offered a solution. And we know we're a bridge from old earth to new earth through us. We're a bridge from what's old to new, guys. That's the symbolism in this. Yeah, you know what I'm feeling called to do? I've never um, done it like this. We'll do it like this. I'm feeling called to do it like this. Mm, I don't feel it. Okay, there it is. Psychic energy system. Energetic cornerstone of heightening awareness. Shifting into visionary perception. Subtle force. Pervading and emanating from the incandescent x-rayed physiology. Chakras whirl with intonations of sanskrit mantra glowing ascending vertically inside the central shaft sprouting to a kabbalistic tree surrounding the adam candom universal human prana laces with chi acupuncture meridians and points operate as rivers of radiance interfused with consciousness Quivering oceans of light penetrate all levels of being, evoking bioluminescent electromagnetic fields and resonance with a spiritual, a higher spiritual template, reflection, multidimensionality, and we've done it. Multidimensionality, that's what's being reflected back to us. Our multidimensionality of who we are. We're not just one thing and our connections and that's connected to the cosmic blueprint. And this is how we're going to heal and use all of these things we just discussed our body to heal and expand with. And that's the message we're bringing the mind deep within the body to connect to the soul child in order to use the body now for manifestation and healing. And look at the body. Look at all the connections within the body. I think we really take the body for granted. And I have a feeling that what happens after this part of the transformation, we're no longer going to take the body for granted anymore. Much love and healing vibes sent your way to create with today. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. <laughs>